بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس السلام علیکم دس از سعادت علی ایس ایس فزکس ایٹ ڈی پی ایس اینڈ انٹر کالج سالی وال آئی ویلکم یو ٹو آر آن لائن چینل آئی ایم ہیئر ٹو ٹیچ یو فزکس سو لیٹ اسٹارٹ آر ٹو ڈیز ٹاپک بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم اسٹوڈنٹس Our today's topic is friction from chapter number 3, Dynamics. The objective of our today's lesson is, by the end of the lesson, you will be able to understand about what is friction, What are the factors affecting the friction? How to calculate the force of limiting friction? And what is the coefficient of friction? Students, before we start our today's lesson, we need to understand some topics that we have read in the previous session. they will help us to understand our today's topic they are force as we have read in the previous lesson that a force moves or tends to move stops or tends to stop the motion of a body The force can also change the direction of motion of a body. Also, we know that a force can change the shape of the object. For example, if we cut an apple by the knife, we can change the the shape of the object with the help of the force that is being applied mass and weight students in the previous lesson we read about the difference between mass and weight so coming on to mass we know that mass of a body is the quantity of matter possessed by the body it is a scalar quantity and its unit is kilogram weight weight of a body is the force of gravity acting on it on the earth weight of a body is equal to the force with which earth attracts it we read about the mathematical expression of the weight it was w is equal to m into g where w represents weight m represents mass and small g represents the gravitational acceleration students from this equation we can find the value of mass as m is equal to w over g we know that weight of a body is a force and thus it is a vector quantity its system international unit is newton which is represented by capital n now students 
in the previous lessons we also learnt about the newton's laws of motion that were three laws of motion including newton's first law of motion second law of motion and third law of motion first and second law of motion are not related to our today's lesson so i will not go in detail but newton's third law of motion is quite related to our today's lesson so going into detail for the third law newton's third law of motion deals with the reaction of a body when a force acts on it let a body a exerts a force on another body which is represented as b the body b reacts against this force that is the action force and exerts a force on the body a now if we want to understand about the action and reaction force the force exerted by body a on b is the action force whereas the force exerted by the body b on a is called the reaction force newton's third law of motion states that to every action there is always an equal but opposite reaction students we have learned in the previous section that these action and reaction forces are equal in magnitude but they are opposite in direction according to third law of motion action is always accompanied by a reaction force and the two forces must always be equal and opposite note that action and reaction forces act on two different objects a question arises that if action and reaction are two equal forces then how an object moves so students you need to understand that action force is on one object and the reaction force is on other object so they do not cancel each other and as a result the object can move now students coming on to our topic that is the force of friction before starting we need to understand some general cases first of all students have you noticed why a moving ball or a moving object stops why a bicycle stops when the cyclist stops pedaling here you can see in the diagram a cyclist keeps on pedaling to overcome the friction what is friction let's understand since a force not only moves 
an object but also it stops the moving object so there must be some force that stops the moving objects that is the cyclist or the moving ball they stop after some time due to the force of friction coming on to the definition of force of friction the force that opposes the motion of a moving object is called the friction students friction is the resistance to the motion when objects rub against each other any time two objects rub against each other they cause the friction friction works against the motion of the objects and acts in the opposite direction friction in some cases is highly desirable while in some cases friction is not desirable so it has certain advantages and it has some disadvantages as well in different cases we need friction for example to walk or to run friction is needed to push the ground backwards when we walk on the ground we apply the force on the ground in the backward direction while as a reaction we move in the forward direction we can understand about the concept of friction by this video how do things move in real life Say a ball is moving on a flat ground and there's no external force acting on it. Will the ball eventually come to a halt? Yes, it will. Have you ever wondered why? Say you're skating on an ice rink and your friend is skating on the road. Whose movement do you think will be smoother? Definitely yours. When you hold a bottle in your hand, why doesn't it just slip through and fall? Sometimes when you're walking around in a mall, Do you remember seeing a caution sign to warn you about the floor being wet? What explains all this? The answer is friction. The reason why the ball eventually comes to a halt is because of the force of friction. The reason why skating on an ice rink is easier because the force of friction is lesser there. The bottle doesn't slip through because the force of friction between your hand and the bottle doesn't allow it to do so. If the floor is wet, the friction offered by it reduces and there are chances that you might slip and fall. So what is this friction we are talking about? It's quite easy to understand its concept. Friction is nothing but a force. It is the force exerted by a surface where an object moves across it. In the first case, when the ball is moving in this direction, the force of friction is acting in the opposite direction. The force of friction offered by the ice rink floor is lesser than the force of friction offered by the road. Hence skating on the ice rink is easier and seems effortless. The bottle does not slip down because the surface of your hand offers a friction in the upward direction. And in the case of the floor in the mall, the soapy water reduces the friction offered by the floor. In the coming lessons, we'll learn a lot more about friction. We'll see the factors affecting friction. We'll understand if friction helps us in our everyday life or not. And we will also cover the different types of friction. So students, friction 
is a force that comes into action as soon as the body is pushed or pulled over a surface. Here are some factors affecting the friction. The force of friction between two objects depends upon many factors such as nature of the two surfaces in contact and the pressing force between them. It is a very important factor that the nature of surfaces plays a very important role in the amount of friction that will be offered when two objects are being rubbed over each other. To understand this, rub your palm over the different surfaces such as table, carpet, polished marble surface, bricks etc. You will find smoother is the surface, easier it is to move your palm over the surface. It means that if the surface is plain then there will be less amount of friction and it will be easy for us to move over the surface and if the surface is rough then there will be larger amount of friction and it will be difficult for us to move the object over the surface. There is another factor that affects the friction which is called the pressing force. What is the pressing force? Let's understand about this. We must know that friction is caused by interlocking of bumps and pits of two surfaces when one object is placed over another object. If two surfaces are pressed harder by a greater force, then the friction will increase. So, to explain about the pressing force, we can say that it is difficult to move a heavy object on the ground than a light object when the two objects are made of same materials. So, greater is the pressing force, greater will be the friction between the sliding surfaces. We can understand the factors affecting the friction by the help of a simple video. Here's a cube that's placed on the table. We know that if we are pushing the cube in this direction, then the force of friction will act in the opposite direction. If we apply a force along the left, then the force of friction will act towards the right and vice versa. The force of friction will always oppose the applied force. What are the factors that affect the friction? Let me give you three situations and then you tell me what it depends on. The first situation is when an object with a smooth surface is moving on a surface which is very smooth. Second, in which the object has a smooth surface and the surface on which it moves is rough. Or the object has a rough surface and the surface on which it moves is smooth. And in the third case, the surface of the object as well as the surface of the table is rough. In which situation do you think will the force of friction be the highest? Intuitively, you will tell me that in the third case, the force of friction will be higher than these two cases. And in which situation will the force of friction be the lowest? It'll be the first case 
as both the surfaces are very smooth. Though there will be friction here, it will be lesser than that in the other two cases. If we just look at these three situations, we can say that the force of friction increases as we go towards the right. So can you tell me the first factor on which the force of friction depends? Yes, it depends on the nature of the surface on which the object moves and the nature of the surface of the object. Yes, it depends on the smoothness or the roughness of the two surfaces which are in contact with each other. If you want to find out if this is true, here's what you can do at home. Create an inclined slope on a table like this and mark a point somewhere on it. Now from this point, let a small cylindrical shaped object move down. You will see that it reaches a particular point and then stops. Next, place sandpaper right under the slope and leave the object from the same point as before. What do you notice? You will see that the distance covered by the object is lesser in the second case. And you probably know why. The surface on which the object rolled was rougher in the second case. And clearly, the force of friction was more. Why is friction caused though? It is caused due to the irregularities on the two surfaces in contact. What do I mean by irregularities? Now, even though the table looks smooth, if we zoom into the surface, we will see the surface irregularities. Even the surface of the object has irregularities. Though they are minor, they still exist. Now the irregularities on the surfaces lock into one another. So whenever we have to move an object, we need to overcome the irregularities. But why is the friction higher on rough surfaces? It's because rougher the surfaces, more will be the irregularities. And if the irregularities are more, then more force will be required to overcome them. So the first factor affecting the friction is the nature of surfaces. Is there any other factor you can think of? Let's say there are two bricks on a table. One weighs 2 kilograms and the other weighs 5 kilograms. Now I apply equal force on them towards the right. Which brick do you think will go further? Remember that they are both kept on the same surface. And the surfaces of the bricks are also the same. On applying the same amount of force, you will notice that the lighter brick covered more distance than the heavier one. What does this tell us? It tells us that the friction also depends on the force with which the two surfaces are pressed together. If the two surfaces are pressed harder, the friction will be more. Why is that? Because of the second brick's greater weight, it presses on the table with greater force. Since its surface and the table surface are pressed together harder, the interlocking between the irregularities is more. And this results in more friction. So mainly, there are two things on which the force of friction depends. The nature of both surfaces and the force with which the two surfaces are pressed together. So, students, a question arises, where does this friction come from? We, in the general, think that plane surfaces are perfectly smooth. But, students, if we see the surfaces under a microscope, we shall come to know that there are small bumps and pits that appear on the surfaces of the different objects which are also called as the irregularities on the surfaces. These irregularities or the bumps and pits, they interlock with each other and cause difficulty for an object to move over the surface. So, we have come to know that no surface is perfectly smooth. A surface that appears smooth has pits and bumps that are also called as the irregularities that can be seen under a microscope. 
these irregularities or the bumps and pits they interlock with each other and they form the cold belts now what are the cold belts the contact points between the two surfaces form a sort of cold belts these cold belts resist the surfaces from sliding over each other here in the diagram we can see these irregularities that can be seen by the help of microscope that these bumps and bits interlock with each other and they cause difficulty for the objects to move over each other friction is equal to the applied force that tends to move a body at rest it increases with the applied force friction can be increased to a certain maximum value it means that by applying the pressing force the friction will keep on increasing but it can be increased to a certain maximum value this maximum value of the friction is called as the force of limiting friction we can define the force of limiting friction as the maximum value of friction is known as the force of limiting friction denoted by fs it depends upon the normal reaction that is the pressing force between the two surfaces in contact now students there is another important factor that is called as the coefficient of friction what is this coefficient of friction let us understand the ratio between the force of limiting friction and the normal reaction r which is the pressing force is a constant this constant is called the coefficient of friction it is represented by mu this letter is called as mu now students we can find the value of force of limiting friction as follows we know that the coefficient of friction is the ratio of force of limiting friction and the normal reaction r so from this expression we can calculate the value of force of limiting friction as fs is equal to mu into r if m be the mass of the block then for the horizontal surface normal reaction r is equal to weight of the object that is w is equal to m into g putting the value of r from this equation into this equation that is fs is equal to mu mg so students this is the value of force of limiting friction here are the value of the coefficient of friction between some common materials that is the value of coefficient of friction between glass and glass is 0.9 iron and iron it is 1.0 tire and dry road is 1 this coefficient of friction has no unit because it is the ratio between two forces so the unit newton will be balanced by unit newton and 
there is no unit of the coefficient of friction. Students, today we have learnt about what is friction as we have learnt in the start of the topic that friction is an opposing force that is offered to a moving object. What are the factors affecting the friction? We have read that the factors that affect the friction are the nature of the surfaces and the pressing force. We also learnt about the force of limiting friction. It is the maximum value of friction that can be attained. Now we shall have self-assessment. By understanding our today's lesson, I want you to learn the following questions. First of all, on what factors friction depends? What are the coal wells? Calculate the value of force of limiting friction. Value of the frictional coefficient between iron and iron is. The options are 1.0 B option 0.6, C option 0.8 and D option 0.2. Another MCQ, value of frictional coefficient between steel and steel is 0.9. B option 0.05, C option 1.0 and D option 0.8. I hope by the help of today's lesson you will be able to understand about the friction. That's all for today. Thank you very much.